This is the Red Elevator Show with me, Josh Everton, Andy Simcox, Alan Smith and Craig Wood. The usual four back together after a few weeks away. I think we've had a few weeks away from it being us four. So it's nice nice to get the band back together just in time for the running. So in this show, we're just talking about sort of this weekend's results, which obviously we didn't play, but it did impact us in terms of are the top two back on again in this running who knows there's a lot of twists and turns to go and also we'll be looking forward to friday's game against cambridge united so let's get stuck into it an interesting one really on saturday obviously we didn't play because the game postponed against portsmouth um but in not playing it wasn't a bad weekend for us as well obviously derby um dropping points at northampton and not that it's brought us right back into contention for me for that top two, but again, it's it's closer than what it was necessarily on Saturday. Two games in hand now, um, and we it obviously still have to win them two games in hand, and one of them is against the league leaders. But it looks a little bit more doable, does that top two? It is, and it's a must-win game on Good Friday. Uh, with two games in hand, aren't we? And uh, seven points behind, so uh, second, so it, it is all to play for. Uh, we've got Cambridge, Cambridge, and we played them. It'll be fourth time we played them on Friday, yeah. and uh, we've had three victories in the only games we've played them against. They haven't beat us. We've won every one. Uh, last one was in October. At theirs, we won four nil away from home. So uh, hopefully, the rest has done us good. We come back fighting because the team and uh, Neil Collins have got to be saying, look. This is a must-win game. I don't want to put pressure on lads, but it is. If we want to be thinking that we might have an automatic chance, then uh, it's a big weekend for us. Yeah, I think, and it does make that Cheltenham result a little bit more annoying as what it was even in the time. Like, at the time, it was a frustrating result to get. But now, obviously, um, with, I think, Derby, and did Bolton drop points as well at the weekend from memory? I can't remember if they um, dropped points necessarily. Just off the top of my head. But it, it, no, they didn't play. No, they didn't play. Sorry. Sorry. They were, were two goals down, weren't they? And they got yeah. two late goals. Yeah, they did. It, is, it is one of the frustrating things, though, with that Cheltenham game. Of, if we could have just <clears> turned that into three points, it would make the league table look a lot more healthy now that, obviously, Derby have dropped points. Well, if some maybe's not it, it weren't. You know, the first half, we got his boots on the wrong feet. So every every shot that we had either got blocked, goalkeeper saved it, or it went just over the bar, just out, just wide. Um, second half, we've said it many, said it a number of times. We want to keep going over old ground. Um, we weren't incisive. We kept passing it along the front of them, out wide, and then crossing it in, having taken Cosgrove off. So we're crossing it to um, players that weren't particularly tall in the air. So. Um, it was just one of them stupid games. I don't think we'd have, we'd have scored to if we'd have played till midnight. It was just one. It was one of them games. You know, lots of people said it were a worse game they've seen. I don't think we were that bad. I thought we were. I thought we were good in the first half. We could have been about four or five up in the first half. Second half were a bit pedestrian, a bit ploddy, lack of urgency for me. Um, but we got. You know, I'm not saying we got what we deserved, but they, they battled. They, you know, their lives depended on it. They they battled and threw themselves in front of it and. And all that. And they had a goalkeeper in top form. I'm sick of goalkeepers coming to Oakwell and being in top form. Um, so, what can you do? If we can't win this this Friday, as Alan said, it's uh, it's a big game. I, I, I really do think it makes it'll make a huge, huge difference. Easter always does. There's always a shake up at Easter. There's often silly results at Easter. I think we've got ours out of way early. Um, but, you know, I'm going to say on paper, anywhere, on paper, on the field, we should beat Cambridge. You know, they're the bottom of the bottom of the form table by along with the last two matches. They've lost 6 0 to Lincoln, who haven't been able to buy a goal before that, have they? They've not scored, hardly scored any goals in a couple of matches before that. Um, mm-hmm. And then 4 0 against, um, against Reading. So they've considered 10 goals in two matches. So if we can't score on Good Friday, There'll be something seriously wrong with uh, with our strike force. I fully expect them to, you know, to get the bit between the teeth, show some Yorkshire grit, and um, stick a few in. But who knows? Who knows? You never know, do you? And then it could happen. Then it could happen. Alan talks about two games in hand. What we've got to remember is that the two games in hand are away to Stevenage and away to Bolton. So 
they're the two that were called off. So they're not, that you know, that not, not both. Uh, not both. Uh, Pompey and Stevenage. So they're not easy games. To put it mildly, they're not easy games. So points are better than games in hand generally. Yeah, hundred percent. Look at Bolton. Um, earlier this season, they were sat nice for three games and then didn't really move anywhere from them three games and then. Craig, I think getting made a good point there of obviously there's sort of two periods during a season that it does throw up weird results um, within it. It's normally the Christmas pick period when you've got three or four games in such a condensed period and obviously Easter uh, weekend as well where the same thing happens at the end of two games in four days. It is a little bit of a... It's one of those periods where a side not doing so well might actually turn someone over you're not expecting. Um, but obviously... As Andy mentioned, hopefully we've got ours out of the way um, a bit earlier this season, um, coming up against Cambridge to turn that around. But is this now sort of lunch, last chance saloon kind of part of the season, given that we've not um, taken the opportunities we've been presented with so far this season? When you look at Bolton being two, being two up there, um, and we threw that threw that away to draw to a piece. And obviously, if we'd have won against Chel- Cheltenham, the league table look a lot healthier than what it does now. Yeah, we've thrown thrown a few points away over the past month. Um, a few too many, and I think I don't think we I don't think we're gonna get top two now. I think it's gonna to be too difficult, too too big a hill to climb. Obviously, expecting to beat Stevenage is one thing, but expecting to try and beat Pompey away as well. I mean, they're guaranteed first spot now. I don't think anybody's gonna beat them for the rest of the season. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's just good. It's just fighting for. Uh, to see who we play at playoffs now, try and finish as high up table as we can. Um, it's going to be an interesting game against Canesbridge. Obviously, they've just got Gary Monk installed, but his first three games they've conceded eleven and only scored one. So, if if, if there's any team that we, that we should get that good feeling from beating and being able to start off with a easy fixture, you know, so to speak, being at home and you know, um, it, it's going to be Cambridge as Andy says the Bournemouth Farm League. Um, conceded ten goals in the last two games. I mean, so I I just hope this breaks, giving the lads um uh, the time that they needed because they did look leggy. They looked leggy in a lot of games in the past month, especially like to, in the last twenty minutes of games. A lot of players are coming off because they were too tired to carry on. So, um, hopefully this is going to give them what the, what they need. But we've got two games in four days. You know. It's, Neil Collins needs to navigate what he's going to do uh, in terms of rotation, in terms of who, who who's going to be fit to play both games, you know, because you can't swap a whole whole eleven. So um, yeah, so there's a lot on Collins, you know, and um, it, 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 top two. I don't think we're going to get it, but it's not it's not not possible, you know. Um, we're just going to have to we're just gonna have to keep fighting and see what we can do. Yeah, I think that's sort of the thing in it, Al. Of obviously, we can. We it's now probably got to that point where it is. It's unlikely because there's Peterborough as well, who seem to have hit a little bit um, more form than what we have at this point in the season. There's, I mean, Lincoln have still got a lot of work to do, but they're banging form. I think they've scored fifteen over three games and conceded one, which we are the one, but we did concede five to them, so not not great. Um, obviously, coming into sort of the business end of the season where you want to start hitting it in form. Um, and it's one of those where we've just got so hope that that week off and then playing Cambridge, who, no disrespect to Cambridge, but as we've mentioned, they're not the bottom of the form table. It's a real opportunity to get some confidence back in the side. It is. I think they've only won nine all season. So it, it is all play for, for us. And we'll have Herbie Kane back, so we'll get his midfield back. Uh, and depends who he's going to play up front and start up front. For me, I think he'll start with McAtee and keep uh, Cosgrove for bad pitch at Burton on Easter Monday. That's that's my thoughts. Uh, so uh, it, it is going to be a, a good game, I think. We've got to come out because we, we need the points to keep pushing. Uh, and it, it looks like, really, if we don't do anything on Good Friday, then uh, our home form, it's not been a fortress, uh, his own form has come back to bite his own backside, hasn't it? And, you know, as a away form, still unbeaten away from home, uh, except for one, which were at Derby. Uh, that says it all, doesn't it? You know, at, at season upon season at times, Oko's been a fortress. 
and we've not made it to Fortress this season. And I think we've sold about 11,000 tickets what I'm, I'm hearing at the moment. So it should be a good day uh, on Friday. So let's see what uh, Neil Collins does. Let's see his selection. Uh, what I do know is that uh, Jallo, he could be on the bench because he mm. played other night for uh, Portugal. Uh, under Portugal. Under-19s, under yeah, under-19s. Yeah. So he played. Uh, I think the one, two, one. So let's see what happens there. Yeah, I think um, so. Looking forward basically to the um, Cambridge game. Um, I'll pull up the stats pack really quickly because we've mentioned most of it already. So, Gary Monk in charge, taking from Neil Harris um, at the beginning of this month. Um, form four losses, one draw in the last five. Top scorer, Gassan Adame on nine, sat 20th in the league. And the formation seems to have flipped um, a little bit whilst Gary Monk's been charged between a 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1, and a 4 4 2. Um, and key player again, Gassan Ad Ad Adame, sorry. Um, so, yeah, Andy, again, just one of those sides that as much as we not and not feel entitled to beat, but it's one of those teams that we'd be expecting to beat, not necessarily in, a, in an arrogant way, but just looking at the fact that they are bottom of the form table. And the, it's not like they've had that new manager bounce either from Gary Monk coming in, which I'm assuming they were hoping could somewhat propel them up, up, up the league a touch and maybe push them towards safety. But on the converse of that, it's a side again fighting for their lives. They're trying to stay in the division. It's not as much as on paper it doesn't like it. It looks like it should be easy. It's in theory, it's probably not. No, it's not. Our two games against Cambridge and then Burton on Monday are both against sides who are three points above the drop. <clears throat> you know, the, the, the four relegation places. So they're going to be fighting. For, they ought to be fighting for everything. Um, I'm not sure what they've done in the last two games, conceding 10 goals. That don't look like much of a fight. But, you know, the Lincoln scoring for fun. Reading, don't know what's going off with Reading. Reading's up and down. They play brilliantly. And then they're not because they've got so much going off. Um, who, who knows where their head's at? Um, we've got to win both games to, to stand the chance. I do think if we can win both games, then it cements us absolutely and definitely in the playoff places. Um, I mean, we wherever it is, about 10 points, 9 or 10 points clear anyway. It, it, you only got to lose a couple and, you know, ground can be made up quickly, then you can start flapping and panicking a bit. It's like it's like winning 3-0, you think, oh, it's nice and easy. Concede two goals, 3-2 and all of a sudden, you're slicing balls, you're missing it. You know, anything can happen when it starts getting a bit giddy, like we've said over Easter. I fully expect us to win both games. I'm 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 not sure what team he's going to put out. For me, I would be seriously considering playing Cosgrove on uh, on Good Friday because they've got Michael uh, Morrison and Ryan, uh, Ryan Bennett at, uh, at centre half, big strong lads. So if we're not, if Sam Cosgrove's not going to start, then please don't put eyeballs into whoever's playing up there. Just don't do it because they're not going to win any of it. So you know, have a bit of have a bit of common sense and play it in a different way. Well, time will tell. Alan might well be right. Might well be saved for the uh, the uh, the game at Burton because the pitch there looked pretty ropey last weekend. It looked real. It looked Fleetwood esque. It looked a bit. Um, it didn't look good. That's for sure. Um, so that you know that stupid into the ground. I mean, at this day and age, ground you know a pitch having a bearing on things. Um, so I don't know. We can only go one game at once, and I think just pick pick our best side to beat Cambridge. Because if we don't, then it becomes a bit more of a, a downward spiral on Monday. So just one game at a time. You know, let's just, just go for Cambridge. Just go at them. We can we can do it. We've got we've got the skill. We've got the midfield, and we've got players up front that can score. So you know, let's let's see what we can do. Coles do a goal. Devantes, they were goal, he hasn't scored for ages. Um, he's had a break, they've all had a break, so it might do him um, the power of good to get his mojo back and get on the end of him, because it's, it's just just not quite, you know, the ball's going, it's just not quite, just off at bar, just by post, the ping goalkeeper. It's it's all that, so, you know, let's see, let's see what he can do. Whoever plays up front, we should be enough for him, but we've just got to play it in the way that suits us, not suits them. So... Mm. 
Greg, where do you sit in terms of team selection? So obviously, there is two ways to look at it, which Andy just mentioned there of, do you play the team that's in front of you or do you sort of play with one eye on Monday as well, given that the games are so back-to-back -back and as we've mentioned, it's sort of no secret that the Burton ground is not not favourable to a nice short passing um, and it could be a game in which a target man such as Sam Cosgrove could thrive in when you sort of look, look back as well to Fleet, Fleetwood away and sort of the impact which had in that in that game as well, working in that kind of role? Um, I'm not too sure. It all depends about where, where Collins wants to play. If he wants to put crosses in, you put Cosgrove on. If you don't want to put crosses in, then don't put Cosgrove on. Um, but I think I think it's fair to say as well that they've had a week off because their, their match against Wickham got also got up as well. So they've had 10 days to look at us and look at the way we play. So I expect them fully to come fully clued up about the way we're going to play. Um, It'd be nice well, if they tell us how we play and all, wouldn't it? If they, uh, if they know how we're going to play, I wouldn't mind knowing. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, they've got a couple of experienced centre backs back there. Not the most mobile, though, I must admit. So having somebody like McAtee, who can, who, who's good with the ball at his feet, who, who, who could take on a man, could come in handy. Also, the aerial ability of Cosgrove could also come in handy. But it's it's just good that we've got both options um, for what we need. One thing I would say is I want Cole to start because I think on the counter attack he's deadly. It's just when we're starting to pass the ball around and try and find gaps, I think we we don't find him. Most of his goals are on the counter attack, and that's it. You know, it's either a cross in from out wide when the defence is trying to get in shape or he's running with the ball from the halfway line, a, a few passes, and he ends up getting in, in the net. Um, he needs to get his mojo back. You know, he's had a few fans saying a few things. I think it's seven or eight games now without a goal. Um, he, wants, he wants to be top goal scorer this season. Let's just hope that this break has given... Him and the team, what what they need to to get back to where to where they need to be, but um, yeah, I I, th I think our problem with the last game was midfield wasn't there. You know, um, I think Herbie Kane is a key cog in that in that midfield. I think he's absolutely key, just like the other two are as well. You know, it seems like if we miss one of the three, we really lose a lot of what our team is and how good they are. You know, whether it's energy, whether it's creation, whether it's defensive ability, one of them three players is key to one of them roles, you know. So, um, it, like I said, I, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win both games. Um, it's just is the, whether it's going to be emphatic or whether it's going to be a nail-biting last minute when we're throwing everybody forward, you know. Um, let's see if Dejuvene can score from a corner again. <laughs> um, even Max Watters got in on last game, so you know anything's possible. Um, but yeah, I I think we'll just have we'll have too much for them. You know, like I said, that that midfield being complete. You know, we've got us wing backs, hopefully Cannon and um, and O'Keefe. You know, we know Williams is gonna have to play in that centre back again, but um, I don't think the throw the. They've got Lyle Taylor, who you've got to watch. You know, he's always going to be a tricky, a tricky guy to come up against because he's. I I think his ability to read the game is why he's was so prolific back in his Charlton days, because he he could run to front post or run to back, and you know they'd just find him. His ability to find space is his key component, which is why I think having three at back really is going to help us against them. You know, because then that's three men who are going to be like, hey, we'll watch weird egos, you know. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I, I I think we've got to win them. We've just got to win them, you know. There's no, no more you can say. Yeah, I think. Also, it... got Kajunga as well, isn't it? the Kajunga who plays up, uh, who plays up, <coughs> to plays up wide. So, you know, they, they've got players there. And of course, they've got our old lad, haven't they? They've got Paul Digby. Holding their central midfield together, um, I always I liked him. Oh well, until he got injured, and he could couldn't not be injured when he was at oh, well. But it was it was a, you you could see he was going to be a really good quality player, and I'm I'm really chuffed for him. There is um, that he got over his injuries. I know, I know he's playing in League One, but then again, so are we. Um, but he's a he was a good player, and he's he's getting a living out of football, and I'm really pleased for that because I thought there were a time. When I thought he wouldn't be able to, you know, he'd have to pack in, he'd have to retire. 
um, because of the constant injuries, but he's come through it, and that's you know all to the good. So it'll I'll, I'll, I'll be it'll be nice. I know it sounds a bit daft, but it'll be nice to watch to watch him play at Oakwell again. I'd like I'd, I'd like to see him. So I always rated him. I hope he's I would, a stinker like. I would just like to say on on Cole is a few times this season we've pressed with the three, you know Adam was on the uh, Adam Phillips on the right, Devante on the left, and then McAtee through the middle. I think that's our best front three, you know, because um, I think when Cole's coming from the left hand side and he's not starting up front, he receives the ball much deeper and it, it is much more influential um, in going forward. He seems to be able to. You know, he's always looking for that last killer pass or that shot when he cuts inside. So I wouldn't mind seeing him play a little deeper on that left-hand side, you know, which would leave a more focal point of Cosgrove up top, you know, somebody that's not going to move from up front. So I think that's one thing that Cosgrove does help Cole with, whereas if you've got McAtee, McAtee drops deep anyway, so it only leaves Cole as a focal point then which then takes away some of that ability to be able to dribble in from out wide, which I think is the best position for Cole. Mm. I think uh, only 21's played today, played Watford. I didn't go because I went to uh, somewhere else. Uh, interesting that Robbie Cundy wanted in the under-21 squad today. Mm. So that could be that Robbie is in contention probably to be on bench for could both be. games. So. Could be. He's that central defender that we had, but when we lost him, we didn't have one. <laughs> That's mm. why Pines had to come in because he was meant to be that central guy, you know. And then he, his injury, I mean, it really stuffed us. So he, it's, it's good to know he's coming back. He hasn't really had a fair crack at it, to be fair, has he? Because, like, when you look at the back three last season, necessarily like Hitchin, Mads, Bobby Thomas, mm. it were a fantastic back, back three and sort of. I think when he did get game time, he always ended up on being the outside centre half. And uh, like like you said, Craig, that's not his game. Um, because when he gets turned and turned round, he's not the quickest player. There's quicker players that can occupy that 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 role. And I think sort of playing that central centre half role it would be his bread and butter, sort of heading everything away, marshalling that ma marshalling the line. So it would be nice. I think it's a nice game as well to bring him into um as well, to be honest, if he was to even start um, and get Jordan Williams back up out in twing back and um, have three centre half playing in centre half positions, which not to sound too revolutionary, but I think that could be a good idea moving forward is playing centre half at centre half rather than trying to shoe on a right wing back there. And it's good uh, to I have options, down, isn't it? It's good to have options. Mm. I think I'm right in saying, did Robbie Kunde, he went at Bristol City and they actually offered him a new contract and he decided to join us. Because he wanted game time, yeah. So I, th I, th I think, I think this is the kind of guy that he wants to use. What somebody that wants to play, it's not all about money. It's not all about being the best team available. It's being at a place where you, you can play, and I think that's the best sort of player you want to at your team. Yeah, I just think he's been really unfortunate with injuries yeah. and just the way in which, especially last season as well. Like even if he wasn't injured, it was very hard to. You couldn't really justify getting rid of that back three or changing that, that that back three really at all. It sort of ended up picking itself from January onwards. So it was just it just <clears> unfortunate <throat> to come to a side that had such a good back three. Whereas this season, had he not been injured, you'd you would have expected to have seen a lot more of him this season, but he just just not had a fair crack at it so far. Same with Benson really. I mean it's mm. just it's been in and out, in and out with injuries, you know. I think there's a good player there. But yeah. his body's just let him down. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Predictions. Andy, we'll come to you last. So, Al, what do you reckon then at Friday's game? Well, if we beat him 4 0 at their place, let's go for a 4 0 at Oakwell. Because they've been leaking goals. So, the only thing is that it depends how they set up, don't it? Teams are coming at Oakwell and just. Park it bus out there and we can't break them down if they park bus. So uh, I think we're going to be positive. I'm going for a 4 0. I won't get any points, but it's nice to be positive. Yeah, there's maybe one on the table for you there, Al. Maybe one. Craig? Um, I think I think 
that they they are going to set up defensively. Twitter's not counter attack. I just think we're going to have too much for them uh, to overwhelm them. So I'm going to go three nil, and I'm actually going to go Herbie Kane, Luca Connell, and um, Devante Colts. Yeah. Whoa, hmm. mainstream form there, aren't you, Craig? Yeah, because I'm expecting them just to pack box. So I'm thinking outside the area, Luca Connell and uh, Herbie Kane's going to rifle one. Mm. Interesting, interesting. And... I think everybody knows Adams Phillips is good, so they'll close him down, but they'll leave other two <laughs> wide open. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's not a bad problem to have, is it? Two play three, a, a, a three that can hit it from outside box like that, Andy. Well, you got to remember that they've conceded fifteen goals in the last six matches and scored one. It does and this that... mean you're going to divert from the two one? Well, no. Well, <laughs> oh, give up. And I'm, I, you know, I'm with Alan. We beat them four 0 at their ground, but they've had Lyle Taylor since then. They scored three goals so far. Um, so they're not. It's fair to say they're not prolific. Um, but he's all. If they, they, I, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, if I were them, I'd come at us. I'd really come at us and, and shock us. But I, I suspect that they'll um, that they'll go. You know, as Craig said, good defensively, set up defensively, and try to. Um, Get us on the uh, on the on the break, um, and they could do that with Lyle Taylor because he's got the uh, he's he's crafty. You know, it maybe he's not, maybe he is, but I don't think he's quite as fast as you. He was quick, but he's crafty, he's clever, a real and he's a, he's a you know a, a fox in a, the box, a, an absolute advantage. He he knows where it is, and I think sometimes, sometimes where we are, we're a, we're a little bit naive in defence at times, is maybe one way of putting it. So I think he could. Uh, but they've only scored one goal. They've got one goal, you know, that's flipping it, one goal. In our ever many minutes, six games are. So I think we're left too much, but I do think they'll but I do I think they'll have a goalkeeper that'll be in great form. Um I hope that we haven't put an extra coat of, coat of paint on the goalpost because that might keep ball out. I think we need to shave a little bit off to help us. Um so I think, you know, I think all in all, it's going to be a, a pretty decent home win at 2-1. Mm. Thought so, to be expected. Crafty Lyle. Crafty <laughs> Lyle. So. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he's got the most annoying penalty yeah. um, technique it's just of all an, time. It's just, it's just a wind-up merchant, that's all he is. Yeah. He knows he, how to he, go down. Oh. Remember that, he knows how to go down and he knows how to spring back up to take a penalty and, like you say, Irritators, yeah, a very irritating. Uh, when he left Charlton, I would, I would die for him to come to us. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. I loved him. Yeah, he's one of the things he love. He went to Forest, Birmingham, I think. didn't he? I thought he went to Forest. Forest. He, oh, yeah, he didn't put Forest at one point, and then he went to Birmingham. Yeah, he went to Birmingham. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll go for. Ooh, I'll go two nil, two nil to us. Um, just run of the mill, steady away. I just don't think that's how they'll score, that's all. I think... I'll, I'll take that, it, mate. I really will. Just take a nice, a nice conference boost and we'll move on from it. They have won one game in the last in the last six away matches, though. They beat... Um, Carlisle. Carlisle away 4-0. So, you know, the, there's, there's a bit of a hint that there's some goals in there. 4-0. So, you know, it's not that... It's not all doom and gloom from And the fighting... The fighting... If they're not up for this... You know, both it should be a good game. Both sides yeah. should be up for it for different reasons. You know, like like we, you said earlier, with Derby losing at Northampton, you know, much as I think it's a tall order, but I thought it's been a tall order for for, for a while. It's still there mathematically. It's still there, and you know, if Derby if Derby going to blow it, somebody needs to pick it up, and we've got just as much chance as anybody else in great scheme of things. So. We should go for it. We should really, really go for it. But I expect expect them to go for it. How how we go for it and how they go for it might be entirely different um, strategies. But it it could be an interesting game. Could be a flipping frustrating game and all. But I think I think we'll come out on top. I think for me, it's a good Friday, lads. I think for me at this point of the season, no point defending now. No point trying to play for them one nil wins and that. Just send. Just get bodies forward. And just try and do something because realistically, I can't see us dropping out of playoffs. I think for that to happen, we have to rely on whoever's seventh to win. Oh, I worked out. I think they've Lincoln, got twenty-one. You mean. Lincoln, you mean? No, it'll be Oxford because I think Lincoln, Lincoln in my head are going to make it. Yeah, I do. it. 
it's one of it's whoever's Stevenage, yeah. yeah, it's between them. Whoever wins however many points have to bridge a ten point gap between us anyway, more than likely. Out of, and get twenty one points, which means we've got to drop eleven in that time that they gain ten, which probably mathematically not gonna happen. Um so for me now just go out and attack. I'd rather just go and have a go at it than try and yeah. butcher his way forward um, and try and nick one nils here and there. Right. Any other orders of business, gents, to get through? Lovely. Right. Just, we... Oh, we've got two matches against the two that are bottom of the form guide, the form league, the bottom so... two. Got to win them both. If we don't, then we don't deserve automatic. Sounds to me like two teams do a win then. Yeah. That we're coming up against fantastic. Well, England are just about to kick off. As you said, Josh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting, it is indeed. Right, we will be back on Friday with instant reaction outside the ground from the Cambridge game. Um, we're outside the club shop. If you're going to come down to a fan camp, feel free to come down and get your opinions in after the game. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to get them up um, on the show as well. And also, we potentially might be doing the Burton preview outside the ground, um, still at TBC in terms of availability for that. So it might be a double episode or there might be two days, two videos. Who knows? We have plenty of content coming, though, over the next couple of days. If it helps, Josh, if it helps, I'm doing a, a, an away end show for, for Monday. No, um, it's, it's not like you to be missing out on the opportunity to promote an away end. I know, I know, I know. But I'm doing it on Thursday. So I'm doing it... Be- before, good. before they're away, Burton are away to Wigan on Good Friday. Obviously, we're playing at home to Cambridge. So, well, so you're releasing it games. Monday? No, no, oh, You Saturday. said for Monday. No, for the Monday's game on game. Monday. On oh Monday's right, game. okay. Yeah, now nah, I get you. <laughs> uh, yeah, shall, shall I say it again, Craig? I'm doing an away end on Thursday <laughs> night with Ed Edward Walker, oh. who's off, does a lot for Burton. He's also famous from Gabe Sutton's EFL debate as well. He gets his sin all over the place, Ed. Um, so he's like you. It's on Thursday. Aye. In fact, both of you two, actually. I know, but, Alan. I, I know, but I, I don't get out shut down like Alan. <laughs> actually, it's not shut down, Mr Simcox. It's still going. It's not shut down. You've just it's not so- been asked to come back on, that's all. It's YouTube. They've not shut it down. It's a- so, in fact, right. It's it's on your, it's it's off your, off the telly, Alan. It's off the telly. Who cares? Talk, talk TV is no longer Talk TV. It's just called TV. Talk. There is Talk TV. It's just Talk, Alex. It's not on TV, Chuck. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't go up. Don't, don't carry on so, Alan. Don't carry on so. Don't take no, it. You don't are. take it out. It's still there. It's still just there. Just cut this bit out, Josh. It yeah. sounds. I'm just. <laughs> it just sounds raw. Does this? Uh, so we're doing I'm Thursday night. With their own Zoom call. Mark, <laughs> uh, who. Is the presenter if he's coming to Oakwell on Saturday on Friday? Is a is a Cambridge fan and he's not coming. Uh, he does right. He does right. It's, it's, it's right that he'll not get home after if he sees you. Right. So Burton doing an away end on Thursday night about Burton's the game on Easter Monday, but it'll obviously be recorded before the games at the weekend. Them at Wigan and obviously it was against Cambridge. So. That'll not be taken into account, but it'll be it'll be released probably, probably somewhat like Saturday night, somewhat like that. So keep your appeal for that. So that's Andy's no. away end if you if you have a belt to let that out. <laughs> <laughs> With um out of date information coming in as well. Just just a not kind like it. Just a kind we like to see. I've got a plan for next year. I'm gonna do all the away ends before the season starts. It'll make it easier. <laughs> yeah, clocks go forward this weekend. Do they? Oh, no. <laughs> and there's just your regular life update as well, just to, become, to bring this show to <laughs> end. Right. We'll be back on Friday to react to Cambridge United. We'll see you later, you Reds.